Hi there, uh, my name is Sanjeev Sachidanandam, uh, or Sachi for short. Today I'll be presenting uh, just a uh, chat about the Reflect package, um, or just Reflection and Go uh, in general. So we'll walk through uh, kind of like a, a simple problem statement, go through some of the basics in the Reflect package, and then try to um, look at a uh, possible solution. So I have been working um, at a company called League. It's, um, <clears throat> it's an insurance uh, benefits platform um, uh, combined with the marketplace. So there's been some growth and one of the problems that we're, uh, uh, we're seeing with growth is um, this pro problem of localize, uh, localization uh, for supported locales. So one of the current problems that we're trying to tackle is to build out an internal uh, localization pipeline um, so that developers aren't involved, um, or at least at the, at the beginning, there's minimal involvement in uh, making sure uh, any strings that, are, that come into our system um, or found in our persistent storage um, is uh, translated as fast as uh, possible. <clears throat> so uh, wh why is this a, um, uh, a problem, uh, at least at, at League? So we have a, a catalog of benefits. They don't really share, a, they have uh, some similarities in their schema, but they, there's a lot of variance. And so we have a internal tool for our operations team that um, can edit and set um, these benefits and um, configurations. And these configurations will uh, ultimately end up in the, the wallet view of uh, the members in their application or, um, on the website. <clears throat> so uh, at times there may be corrections made, et cetera. So we don't, currently our process has been, uh, hey, we're onboarding like a new customer um, near the end of uh, kind of this um, um, onboard process. We'll, we'll make sure that, hey, every string that we've configured uh, is localized. So we want to move away from that and operationalize this. So. Uh, so today's agenda, we'll just kind of focus on problem statement, reflect basics, solution, and then a Q&A. So feel free to jump in. Um, so again, this is the problem statement. Given a large catalog of models within the same domain, how can we uh, identify the string attributes? So, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm kind of like mixing here uh, this identifying strings with this localization pipeline. So. This is really just step one. Um, of course, there's, there's way more complexity here. Um, so the first step, let's identify it, and that's what this kind of talk is uh, focused on. Uh, one possible solution uh, could be to perhaps like map, annotate, maybe register with some kind of component um, specific fields as in structs as they're created from the developer. Um, but <clears throat> There's, once we have this component defined, yes, the developer effort is low, um, but there are disadvantages here. It requires them to be aware of this process um, and ensuring all new kind of string fields or any fields that have chain schema are annotated correctly. And it doesn't really scale well with like new team members. And there's just like a load on uh, code reviewers. So another, um, possible solution here um, that we'll explore is just at runtime, uh, analyzing the um, um, fields <coughs> in models. So the advantage here is like, it's not a development task. Uh, it's not an operational task anymore if, if we put in the effort to kind of build the system. So why reflection? So we know that goes statically typed. Um, so we, all, we always know at compile time, a variables type and value, but reflection is the ability to analyze the var variables and values at runtime. So well, there's some practical, practical applications of this, and it doesn't have to obviously be around this uh, concept of identifying strings. Uh, this is just a simplified version. In general, I think you want to use it uh, whenever you want to create like generic logic that takes input of varying types and associating the same behavior to them with respect to fields with, contained within the object here. So 
<coughs> there's three in the reflect package, or I think in reflection in general, there's three uh, elements, if you will. So there's uh, one of it is uh, the reflect type um, <coughs> struct. Um, so there's, there is an instance, um, sorry, there's a public uh, method at the package level, the type of, that will give you this like type object back. So for this example here, um, like uh, there's this benefit struct. If we were to actually call the type of on this, it's going to return this demo uh, dot benefit uh, as its concrete type. Another um, uh, element is this kind. So sometimes it's kind of confusing. What's the type? What's the kind? Here we can always they're related. The kind is the uh, specific kind of type. Um, so in this case. Um, we can check the primitive type um, the, um, the, through these constants that are defined in the reflect package. So you can check, hey, is this, this entity, is this, uh, is this a, f uh, a float or a, or a struct or a pointer? Um, so let's, let's validate that. Um, so as we go through this, we're just going to go through like actual some some tests um, to validate some of these assumptions. So I hope you can see all uh, see this. Let me know if you want me to. Actually, I can bump it up. Um, so I have this like um, model file here. Just has like some um, this struct that I've just created. Um, it's got some fields, got a map slice, um, some pointer fields. Uh, it's there's this other struct type uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> So let's, let's look at type and kind here. So we, we're, here is just table, um, stable, table style tests. Um, so the, here I'm just um, putting a name for this subtest and the input. The input here is just like the integer <laughs> four, and here is a little bit uh, more complex struct. So if we were to uh, actually run this, <coughs> All right, so for the first one, we, it's saying the type and kind uh, are both ints. Um, second, it's saying the type is actually this concrete type uh, prefixed by the, the package name that I had. The kind is the struct. So it's validating um, some of the statements that we, uh, we just made. <coughs> so value here. Um, let's look, take a look at that. Value, um, I would describe it as, yes, it's a reflect value type. Uh, but let's, again, take another um, uh, a look or a deeper look. So here, again, another test, a primitive type, the test struct with some fields filled out. Uh, and then like uh, another version of that test struct, but instead it's a pointer. So for the int type, uh, so there's, there's uh, some uh, subtleness here in the sense that for here I'm printing out the value and I'm actually asking this value object um, um, what it's, um, the, what the string value of its string, the value of its string method. Um, so here it's actually saying for that, um, <clears throat> for that test struct I had created, the value is this kind of like a reflect, uh, reflection object signature. But if we were to actually just try to print out the concrete value uh, using FMT, you'll see that it actually prints out uh, the, the contents of that struct. So FMT in, ter in, in turn is using reflection to look at the passed in um, argument and pr to, to print out the actual data stored in these objects. So next we have, oops, sorry. <coughs> oops. So uh, the element method. So that's an instance method both found on the type and uh, value uh, uh, structs. So, but we have to be careful here uh, because it will panic uh, as, uh, as intended. Um, so 
uh, for reflect type objects. If you call panic, you want to probably check the kind here uh, that it's like this, like a container type. Uh, so you can think of that as like a slice, pointer, the map, or channel. Um, otherwise, we'd uh, panic. So for value objects, we want it. It can only, uh, it would only be successful if it's a pointer or an interface type. So this one's a little bit um, trickier to verify because we actually want to. We want to confirm that the panics occur, um, perhaps. So for this case, again, like a similar style. So I have the pointer to my test input, a slice of integers, uh, and then I have like a map input. Um, here are my tests. I have um, some code just to catch the exception uh, and just uh, validate it against my expectation of the panic or not. Um, so it's just using the defer here. Um, so. <clears throat> I've highlighted kind of like where the panic w uh, may occur, um, but we, we would expect it. So in this case, like I'm just taking the input, getting its type, its kind, and just printing it, uh, calling the uh, element method, um, and then checking, calling the element, sorry, calling the element method both on the type and the value. <laughs> so you'll see that um, for map inputs, so for value types, if you were to call uh, the element, it's going gonna, it's gonna to panic, um, as well as for slices here. For pointers, it wouldn't. Um, so let's, let's confirm that. So all green. Um, so our expectations are correct for pointers. <clears throat> the value, uh, calling the element method on the value isn't panicking, but on... Um, Sorry, for the slice and maps, uh, it is. So when can you go back and forth? Really, it's just uh, it's not bidirectional. So if you're given, given the value, you can get the, the reflect type, but not the inverse. Um, struct fields. So um, structs are like the kind of one of the core components in Go. So we want to be able to iterate through like fields in the struct and just make note that it, can, it needs to be exposed outside the package. If you're trying to uh, access uh, through a reflection, um, the properties of, uh, of a struct defined in, out, in an external package. So um, it gives you the ability um, to you know, get the field name, the ordering uh, of that field within the, the struct, its type, any annotation tags you may want to append to that. So let's take a look at an example of that. So going back up here to review our model. So again, we have a bunch of fields. Um, note that I have some annotation tags on like the float field. Um, so let's look at the test for that. <clears throat> so, uh, so I'm just getting its type. Um, <laughs> here, I'm just check, making sure that if it's the pointer uh, to a, if it's a pointer object, I'm actually getting the element behind it. In this case, like it would be the test struct object directly, because we want to check that hey, it's a struct kind before we start iterating um, through num fields. I believe if you call num field like on a non-struct object, it, it would panic um, as well. So I'm just pr printing out some like properties of the, each field. The name, uh, the kind, and then like the tags here on, on uh, the test struct object. <clears throat> so it's a lot of data here, but essentially like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's what we expect. It went through each of those fields and note that the tags um, that are printed were just uh, associated to the float field. You, you may want to annotate. So in practical applications, you may want to annotate fields because uh, later you may want to uh, uh, target those fields. Um, and it's not by name or like by type, but um, based on some kind of domain modeling that you have or like some kind of business logic. Uh, so you may want to use tag annotation that, for, for that. <coughs> Oops. So lastly, we, we know that given um, an interface uh, reference, 
we can always type check uh, uh, for this underlying concrete object uh, in Go. But what about the reverse? So can we like take an object and ask uh, or confirm whether it implements some kind of interface? So you can use a reflect package for that as well. Oops. So here, uh, test struct, I'd, I've defined some kind of like interface with some method, and note that test struct uh, implements that, but inner struct does not. So how can we um, verify? So here I have just like two test cases for those two struct, struct types. So we, what we can do here is what the, the type has an instance method called implements, and you can pass it another type. So in this case, we want to get the type of the input and compare it to the type of the interface. The interface type, note that what we want to do is pass it a zero value um, object. So the type of pointer of the interface with the zero value and then calling the element here. Um, so does this um, work? Does this meet expectations? So let's also confirm this. <coughs> Yes, <laughs> it does. <laughs> so I guess the last thing here is just, uh, it's, one, it's in the Go blog, which is, uh, there's a, I think it's called the laws of reflection. Um, there is um, the third law of reflection is just to modify a reflection object, uh, the value must be settable. So uh, it's similar to, think of it as functions. You know, when you pass parameters to functions, they're passed by uh, value. So any modifications you made in the function um, doesn't actually modify the um, called in parameter. So similarly, um, if you were to try to do that uh, through reflection, it's gonna panic. So there are methods uh, that you can call to see if uh, they're settable, if values are settable <coughs> before you attempt to set them. <coughs> so here's a test, test setability. So there's test structs. Um, so can we, um, so I'm expecting, can we set or not? Um, so, <clears throat> so for the case where I'm not passing in, <clears throat> sorry, when I'm not passing in the, uh, a pointer, uh, I expect that we cannot set it, but in the case that I am, um, I expect that uh, we should be able to. <clears throat> and so there's just a, a validation of that, and then if, if we can set it, uh, let's see if we can mod get um, the struct fields, uh, that int field property, and just set it directly, set, set the input as three. Um, so we should expect like <coughs> the um, int, int field value should be set to three. So, here you see um, it's just printing again the contents of the, the, the struct, the f and you'll see the first value that was there, it's now three. Um, <clears throat> so lastly, like what, what, where is reflection used? It's kind of like anywhere you see like a method signature where uh, you're taking in like the, the interface type. So that's kind of like a implication that it's, it's gonna use reflection. Um, so like the JSON uh, marshalling, un marshalling libraries uh, in Go um, definitely use reflection, like, cause they're, you're looking at the struct tags and then setting um, values on the struct fields. Um, so the Go fuzz library, if you've used that, like that's also um, using reflection cause you're gonna give it an object and it's gonna look at each field and uh, fuzz them and you can, you have, you can set constraints on uh, what you want to fuzz uh, values to as well. So let's go back to like the original problem statement. All right, now that we, kind of, I think we, we know a lot more than what we need uh, to solve that problem, which was, hey, given some kind of complex uh, struct, how can we identify strings? So I don't want to I don't want to like type this out during the, the the demo. So we'll just walk through kind of like the strategy here. So there's this identify strings method. It's going to take like an arbitrary object. Um, what we're going to do is let's just 
Let, so we know that we want to pass struct types here. So let's go back, let's just jump down here so we'll, uh, to the end. So we know that for struct types, we want to iterate through the fields and then like um, check if it's a string type or not and then just keep appending. Um, but what if it's not a struct type? Um, so in that case, we want to check, hey, uh, what is the, 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 the kind? If it's a pointer, we want to get the element behind it. Uh, and if it's not a struct type, we want to go through that same algorithm that we would for any of our struct fields. Like, is this a string? Uh, what if it's a map, a slice, et cetera? So we, I have this like helper method to just make the code a little cleaner. So in the helper method, now we're, we're get, taking this value object. Um, again, we want to check the uh, field kind. And then check that, um, let's skip the pointer for now. But for struct, we want to just call back up um, to, to the caller. So this is a, this is a recursive search, because we want to um, support uh, multi-level um, structs, um, struct types. <clears throat> for map, we, we iterate through the map and then call back up. Uh, for slices, again, similarly. And then like the, the stop case here uh, is the string. When we encounter a string, we're just appending, uh, appending the value and then returning it. If we were to go back, uh, so the pointer here is, hey, wh what if we pass in a struct um, and one of the fields is actually a pointer to another struct? So this is just handling that case. Uh, we want to just, there's this is valid check here. It's just checking that, hey, the pointer is not nil um, or like the non-zero value here. Um, um, yeah, so let's, the last, so this is the last, test that we'll take a look at. Um, so it's just this, hey, let's, let's uh, fill out this model, see if this thing actually works. So note that, so in the map, there's a string field, there's the slice of strings, um, there's the, yeah, the string field um, as a sibling, there's an inner, inner struct that has a string field, and then like a pointer to that inner struct as well, which has a string. So the expectations are just like put the strings together. I expect this algorithm to just kind of find this, uh, this list. Um, uh, yeah. So it, it, it should find it. <laughs> so, uh, oh, there's something wrong. What happened? Huh. I think it was this. I think I was playing with some stuff prior. All right, that's a demo fail. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yes, I was playing with something. I was putting like go to, uh, just like a random one. There you go, okay. Um, <laughs> live demo here. Uh, yeah, that's 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 it. <laughs> Hopefully, you learned something. Thank you. Any uh, questions? Cool. Yes. Yeah, sir. I'm wondering, like, within the reflection part, <coughs> is there any like uh, particular functions that you kind of suggest staying away from that are particularly like heavy? <coughs> Um, like if we, you know, I kind of just assume that when I go to use reflections, there's going to be some part of it that's going to be a little bit more intensive than like most other operations. But is there like kind of hot spots for stuff that we should stay away from? Uh, I haven't detected any hot spots, but uh, I wouldn't say that like I've, I have not gone through um, a lot of these functions. So like look how big the type interface, it provides a lot of functionality. Um, I, I haven't really kind of worked with channels uh, with reflection. Uh, so I don't have much experience there. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's any h hot spots per se, but maybe I've just never like used reflection for very complex uh, type of problems. Yeah, um, like reflection has the ability to like um, create functions on demand or at least wrap functions. Uh, 
Um, I don't believe you can uh, imp you cannot implement uh, methods to satisfy some interface at runtime. Okay. Uh, you can't use reflection for that. Um, uh, yes, maybe it's just uh, an experience on my part okay. to be able not be able to answer that. Yeah. And maybe kind of a, a separate question that's specific to your example of localization. I mean, mm -hmm. um, so in your example, I think you're going and you're checking for a, <coughs> a string uh, view. Um, but if instead you were to just uh, say check for something in, a, in an annotation, would that be less intensive than <coughs> Uh, no, you, you regard, even if we were to annotate it, uh, note, remember like our struct, our model, isn't just a one level of depth. Right, right. And it isn't, um, our catalog of models uh, aren't, uh, so we have a catalog of deferring models. Right. So we want to have a general way of identifying that. So you, yes, right. so you can, you don't have to, you can use the same approach and instead of using like trying to find string kinds, yeah. you can, try to find fields with certain annotated tags. Yes, we're be using the same exact strategy. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right, thank you.